Welcome to Overcome America Hair Loss Summit. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I am your host. And today I am with Jeff Wojtovich. He is he founded the Children's Alopecia Project in 2004, about a year after his second oldest daughter was diagnosed with alopecia. He has since made it his life's purpose to raise awareness about alopecia, build self-esteem in children with the disease, and has provided support for their families and changed the emphasis from growing hair to growing confidence. I am so happy to have you here today, Jeff. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. So I would love to know where this amazing project came from. Well, it's kind of simple. My my second oldest daughter, like you said in your opening, um, Maddie, she started losing her hair when she started kindergarten, and there was nothing that was out there that was specifically devoted to children and their mm -hmm. self-esteem and how they felt about themselves. So after looking for something like that, I just realized that we needed to start something, and it just started as a little support group outside of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And then one thing led to another, and we started getting more families interested in the area than outside of the area. And then it just got to the point where I decided, you know what, I think we could probably do a lot of good because it's, it's helping my daughter, and more importantly, it's helping me and my wife. So we decided to become a 501c3 nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, we just kept on moving forward. I love that. And... So right now, I know you have about 50 camps across the world. Well, we have, we have 50 uh, uh, cat kid groups. They're support groups, but okay. yeah, they're really just, we like calling them cat kid groups. We don't want people to think that it's a support group where you go and you just commiserate on how upset you are because you're losing your hair. We understand that it's it's horrible. It's mm -hmm. it's 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 not a good place to be. If anybody that has a full head of hair can even picture for a moment that they lose a quarter of their hair overnight and then tomorrow you have to go about your day. Mm -hmm. It's devastating. Mm -hmm. And when you have something that's not life threatening and it doesn't hurt, mm -hmm. technically, physically, it's not a big deal at all really what it comes down to is how you feel emotionally. And that was, that was the biggest part of it. We just mm -hmm. knew that we needed to start something that would help kids. Right. And, you know, I wish I knew about this. Well, I started losing my hair when I was 18. Um, so I was probably a little older for, for your program, but, right. um, I do know what you mean when you say that that community and that support is needed. Um, Cause I think more than anything at the beginning, when you're, when you're starting losing your hair, it's like, is a, the feeling of I'm different and I don't belong and um, not being able to talk to anybody because you're ashamed or at least I was ashamed. Um, so I really appreciate what you're doing. And also because I know it's coming, like you said, from a place of, um, yes, you wanna, you wanna have the support and being able to talk to somebody, but also make the good out of the bad, right? Like to embrace and teach confidence and self-esteem instead of focusing on, um, on the problem, right? And that's also, I wanna share with you, part of the reason why it took me, because I've been wanting to do a summit or something like this, for about two years now. And the reason why it took me this long is because I didn't know how to create something that wasn't gonna focus on the problem. Because I realized that for me to get to the other side, I had to not focus on the problem. I had to focus on what I wanted for my life. Um, you know, the good things that has brought to me, you know, like the soul searching, the, the looking for something else outside my, my body, to be happy the um you know I, I i couldn't focus on the alopecia because all, all i could hear was is it an autoimmune disease that is not curable we don't have a cure no 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 it was all negative 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 for years <laughs> and so i had to focus out of the problem for me to get over it so when i was trying to create something that will help people 
I was thinking, okay, so how do, how do I do this without bringing in the language of something's wrong with you or let's help you out or because I feel like we need to focus out of the problem. So I really appreciate your approach, what you're doing. And the fact that you're doing it with kids is so important because me going through this as a teenager and as a young adult, I can imagine being a kid and, and going through this. And because kids don't even know what's happening. They're just mean sometimes. And they just say what they're thinking. So, wow. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think one of the biggest things that is very tough for a parent, uh, more so than the child. When you're in school and you're in an environment where you're going to have people that are going to judge you based on what you look like, because let's face it, I don't care how nice of a kid you are, if you're going to school, you are going to see what other kids are wearing and what they're doing, who they're hanging out with. So you already have this pecking order of who is who and where they're at, period. Mm -hmm. So when you're a child and you're losing your hair, obviously the thing that you're thinking about the most is that everyone's noticing your lack of hair. So if you make yourself withdrawn and you're no longer confident on who you are, then the easiest target for somebody who would say something or tease you or make fun of you or bully you will be the most obvious. And the most obvious on a kid with alopecia would be the fact that they have less hair. But like, like you said earlier, the reality is when you are a kid, it doesn't matter if you have hair or not. The bad guys, and when I say the bad guys, bad guys can change. But at the time, if you're going to be a kid that's going to say something or make fun of someone or bully or tease them, you're going to find whatever their physical weakness is. And that could be, you could be the tallest girl in the class. You could be the shortest boy in the class. You could be black or white or Hispanic or Asian. You could have red hair with freckles. You could be overweight. You could be really skinny. There are so many different reasons why somebody will pick on someone. Alopecia is just an an extra thing. Mm -hmm. So if you were a child that was overweight and you had alopecia, well, you might get made fun of because of not having any hair, but you could also be made fun of because you're overweight. Mm -hmm. And what we've always told the kids, we're not looking through any, any rose colored glasses here. We're basically saying you are who you are. And regardless of what you think about yourself, you're perfect exactly the way you are you can change. And if you want to change the stuff you can change, change it. But in the next five years, you're going to change. In the next 10 years, you're going to change. And you're going to be perfect every time you do it because you are you. There's no one else like you. You're mm -hmm. perfect exactly the way you are. Mm -hmm. When we started thinking about it that way, it made things so much easier because there, there are no duplicates in this world. And we always use the example of the Mona Lisa being a perfect original uh, work of art that is priceless. It's in a museum in France. It's under, under a guard with weapons. And it's not even shown all the time because that's how valuable it is. But if I would ask people, is that the best painting you've ever seen? Everyone's not going to say yes. You're going to have your opinions. Well, yeah. it's just like people. We're all different but we're originals and we're perfect exactly the way we are. Mm -hmm. I love that. And yeah, I mean, I, I had, I also had to get to that point in my own journey to accept myself and love myself and just realize that, you know, I was made this way for a reason. And now I want to bring the good out of this and, and help other people and, you know, bring them to the other side with me. So um, I'm so excited that, you know, something like this for children exists. And so I've been, I've been fascinated with this project for a long time. And I'm just so excited to finally connect with you and, and, you know, learn more about it. So for the parents out there, because I know from my mom herself, uh, it's, it was rough for her to find out that what I was going through. And, um, so what was it like for you? Oh, it, I have four daughters, so I have these beautiful little girls with full heads of hair, and then all of a sudden, one of them is losing it. 
and she just started kindergarten. So she just made all these new friends. She felt like a big kid, like her big sister who was in first grade. Definitely she felt bigger than her two other sisters that weren't even in school yet. And now I'm dealing with something that as a stereotypical male at the time, girls are supposed to have hair. And it's my job to brush their hair at night. And you're telling me that now I'm, go I'm going to have one daughter that I can't brush her hair anymore because her hair is really falling out fast. It, it was a shock to me. It was something I couldn't understand. M my wife has alopecia, but she has the classic areata where she gets a bald spot every couple of months, every couple of years. Not a big deal. Never has it been a visual thing. So it's been very easy for her since 1976. But now it's the reality of this was that, oh my gosh, all these new friends, they're going to make fun of her. They're not going to want to be friends with her anymore. And then I'm thinking about all of that elementary school where she's not going to participate in, in sports. She's not going to meet new friends. She's not going to get into um, any clubs. She's not going to go to high school. And then she's not going to have any dates. And she's not going to go to the prom. And then she's not going to go to college because if she's made fun of in elementary school, middle school, and high school, why would you go to another school? Mm -hmm. And then I'm thinking, she's never going to get married. She won't have a family of her own. And I just remember when I had that thought, when that feeling came to me, it just totally broke me down. So all, all of my vanity, all of my superficial stuff, it just stopped right there. And it was when we, we first got the official diagnosis when we were driving home. It just hit me. I pulled over to the side of the road and I just started crying because I'm just thinking, my little girl, her life is pretty much ending before it's even starting. And there was a lot of self pity. There was a lot of, a lot of self pity. Mm -hmm. uh, wife blamed herself. Mm -hmm. It was a horrible week or two. Mm -hmm. And then we decided, all right, we have to like, we have to be good parents. We have four daughters and Maddie, even though it's happening to her, she's taking it a lot better than us. And mm -hmm. that's when we decided that we need to reach out. We need to find other parents. And the support groups that we went to, it's mostly middle-aged women complaining about their wigs, their makeup, their false eyelashes. Mm -hmm. And the few kids that did have alopecia, they pretty much were on the ground playing behind the grown-ups that were basically very upset and mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, you know what? I don't want that. Exactly. I want, I want her to be inspired. Mm -hmm. I want her to know that there are other people just like her that have transform themselves from the bald kid to the actor, the, yes. the professional, the, the, this, that, the other thing. I wanted to make sure that she knew she could do whatever she wants and that her parents should, should not be an issue. Mm -hmm. And it really helped me getting through that by actually starting the support group and then eventually the nonprofit. So I was your stereotypical dad guy I should say girl should have hair and that this is stupid we need to find a cure we need to do this 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 and then when I realized it just wasn't happening and it's just not going to be I realized what really mattered and the thing that mattered it wasn't it wasn't the alopecia in my daughter it was right. my daughter with alopecia yes absolutely so uh, have you guys did you stop looking for treatment oh you're real fast you're, you're done yeah okay. real fast um it, it just came down that she was fine she she never wanted to wear hats but of course we gave her hats to wear and then we're the ones that made her feel horrible because now she was afraid to take the hats off but she listened right. to us because we're the parents and we said here's a hat so we failed with that we were able to get her to take the hat off in school and after that, things started getting a little bit better. And she was taking, you know, the basic, uh, basic stuff that they give you. But the reality was we got a recommendation that, well, maybe you should put a shower cap 
over her head so that way it will open up her pores so that way the medicine can really seep in and we did that thinking whoa you know what that's a really good idea i mean if some mm -hmm. italian scientist said that it it must be kind of true so we were doing that for a couple of nights but every morning she would wake up with this big red mark around her head because of this plastic shower cap oh, yeah. and it looked worse than her beautiful smooth bald head so we decided that we were going to let her make the decision and her decision was yeah i don't want to wear this because if you can just picture it, it, for those of you uh, that are old enough to remember little house on the prairie the series we were putting her to bed in a little bonnet basically that was made out of plastic and elastic that would just make her head look horrible in the morning so when she said she didn't want to try that anymore we said fine and she never wanted to try anything else so if she was okay with it we were okay with it um, the only time that we tried anything else was we did have one time maybe uh, she lost her hair in october of 2003 i think january of 2004 her hair grew back and she had maybe a half an inch of hair growth all over and we, we were thinking well maybe it's going to grow back but we were very prepared that it it was just a a growth spurt if you will mm -hmm. um but what happened was she started getting a bald spot right here. So we thought, well, maybe, maybe the injections of cortisone, if we were able to get the injections in there, maybe she won't lose it anyplace else. And then it will just, you know, ignore the hair, concentrate on the cortisone, and then the hair will grow back. Mm -hmm. And it did, which was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. The problem was it was growing back here on the bald spot, but then it started falling out all over her ears and the back of her head then her eyelashes, her eyebrows. And then she lost all the hair on her body, except for the little patch of hair here that the injections oh. went through. So then we had fun with it. Uh, she let it grow and she used to braid it. And I had a longer goatee at the time, so she called that her goatee. And it just got to the point where she said, you know what, I think you can shave it off. And we shaved it off. And ever since January of 2004, it's just never come back. How old is Maddie now? She is, she'll be 22 in April. Wow. And she's a senior, she's a senior at Jefferson University and she studies, her major will be fashion merchandising. Wow. Um, yeah, she's a fashionista, just, just like me. Um, and she's not wearing hair, right? No, no, she's never worn, Put it this way, as a kid, we used to make her wear a hat in the wintertime because I think she got to the point where she just did not want to wear anything on her head because she didn't want people to think that she was trying to cover it up. So she would make a statement by just being bald all the time. And and the one thing that we always teach the, the, the kids and also the, the parents is that it's not an issue of wearing a wig or a hat or a bandana or anything that you want to wear. That's fine. Mm -hmm. The key is that we want kids to want to wear it. We don't want them to feel like they have to. Mm -hmm. If you have to, then you have that weight on your shoulders and you don't want a weight that you don't need on your shoulders. You don't want people thinking things. You want to be who you are. So choose when to wear the wig, choose when to wear the hat. And, um, Luckily, we never really had to deal with that part of it. And it's a big part of it. And it's, it's tough for kids and parents. So, um, no, she never really needed to wear anything. That's amazing. And I think uh, it, that's a huge dilemma now that, that, you, that you bring it up. Or it was for me. And I, I would like to say that up until very recently, almost just last year, I really got um, how important it is for it to be a choice, right? So I've been wearing hair for five years only. Um, and last year I decided that I was gonna take off my hair. So I have, it's kind of like a top, so like all of my sides are gone. This is just the top. And um, I wanted to take it off because I'm a coach 
And I felt that I was not being authentic while I was preaching to other people to be authentic. So in my head, I was thinking, okay, I must be being perceived. I, I am being perceived as inauthentic because I'm hiding, because I'm wearing hair. So let me take it off and, and, and just be who I am. Because if, you know, if I'm, if I'm telling people to do this, then I got to be able to do it myself. Right. That was my thought process. So I take it off and I came home. I'm married now. Came home to my husband, super excited. Um, it just felt really good to have all parts of my body be mine. Right. <laughs> Not like this hair I didn't purchase with my body. Right. It's still mine. <laughs> Owned but, it. It's yours. Yeah, it's mine. And so I just, but it, but it's fun. Like I don't know. It feels good to like not have something else. So first day I was doing fantastic. Second day I was just like, this doesn't feel good because it takes it it, it takes me longer to try to cover up, to try to put the spray or the pigments or the blah blah blah, and try to make it look better. And, you know, to do all the things takes me two hours <laughs> instead of just having this and being ready to go and enjoy my day. Yeah. So, you know, I, and so I went to see my family and I kind of like let the whole weekend go by. And then I realized, and I talked to my husband and I said, you know, I think that at this point in my life, the hair is a choice of a lifestyle that I want to live, which is happy like um yeah just um being able to be ready to go that's all i want you know i work out i work out every day so i i those days i also try to work out and imagine the three hairs that i have when they're all sweaty no it was just it was just messy so i said you know what i'm gonna put it back this has nothing to do with authenticity at this point i do get why when i did it the first time I was hiding because I was legitimately hiding. I was, I was hiding the condition, but now that I'm completely open about it, everybody knows about it. It's just a lifestyle. So I think, um, I think what matters, like you said, is to, to get to the point where it's a choice and not that you're hiding. Well, let me give you, let me give you a quick reaction. Remember I was wearing the baseball cap when I first got yeah. on with you Yeah. and I decided you might, like, you know what, here I am. I better take the hat off because I don't want people thinking I'm advocating that you, you know, that you cover up. Mm-hmm. It's a choice. I decided today that, you know what, I'm going to wear a baseball cap. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we started talking, I decided, Oh, I have a base. I just made a choice. I'm not wearing a baseball cap. Now I don't have alopecia. I'm just, I'm bald the old fashioned way. I, I just mm-hmm. got old, but I had 35 years to get comfortable to the fact that I was losing my hair. Mm -hmm. With everyone else, I don't care how long it takes you to have hair loss, it's not natural. And it usually happens a lot faster than 35 years. And then you have to try and make the right decision. And you don't know what the right decision is because you've never been put in that situation. If I could take all the kids of the world and say, listen, I wanna prepare you for alopecia. So come on over here, line up, I'm gonna shave your head. And then tomorrow, go about your day. And then when it grows back, be thankful that you have hair. And for those that will get alopecia, now you understand how it's going to feel. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, that can't happen. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is you just do what makes you feel comfortable. But you do it because you want to, not because you have to. Mm -hmm. That's it. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about, about the support groups and the camps and the events that you do. Like, what can we expect if we bring our children to, to camp? Well, I, there's no doubt in my mind that the, the, the thing that helps kids with alopecia and probably with other things also is to make them feel like they're part of something. Mm-hmm. We all need to find that tribe that we belong to. And sometimes the kids, they don't know they belong to a tribe. Mm -hmm. And when they come to a cap kid camp or alopecia palooza or to a cap kid group meeting, which is a support group, Mm -hmm. and you see other kids that look really close to the way you look, you feel more comfortable. And then you see some of the kids that they might not be wearing a hat or a wig and it's really hot 
and you're wearing a hat or a wig and you're thinking to yourself, well, geez, everybody that's here has no hair or the parents or the siblings of somebody that has no hair. So maybe this is kind of like a safe space. Mm -hmm. So I'll take it off and see how it feels. And then before you know it, at the end of the camp or at the end of the, uh, the cap kid uh, group meeting, that kid now isn't even thinking about covering up. They're just thinking about who they are. They're having fun, they're doing something, and there's not that, that, that added stress of trying to do something that's different. So with Alopecia Palooza, you know, we have between 250 and 500 people that attend this every year. It's really intimidating because you might be a child that's, I'll, give, I'll just give you an example. Uh, you might be a child that's wearing a do-rag and you never take that do-rag off, no matter what. When you play baseball, you put the baseball cap on over the do-rag. And now all of a sudden, here you are with all these other kids. There's a hundred other kids with alopecia. And you see the ones that aren't wearing anything. And they're not worried about making sure that whatever's on their head is staying on. You see the girls that are running around with nothing on their head. And you're mm -hmm. thinking the same thing. And you're taking notice of all the kids that are still wearing do-rags and bandanas and hats and wigs. And they're usually not the ones that are just knee deep in fun. They're still the ones that are standing off to the side. They're the ones that are hesitant. But when you look at all those kids, it might not happen on the first day. It might not happen on the second day, but I promise you, before that three or four day camp is over, those kids will become themselves. They will take off their hat and their wig and they will be totally free because they know they found their tribe and everyone has their back. No one is going to judge them based on their hair. Now, if you're a kid with no hair and you're a jerk, well, guess what? You're gonna realize that kid's a jerk. And that's the, one, the other thing I say, your personality is your personality. You might not be likable because you're not being very nice. You might be likable because you are nice. It doesn't matter if, it, if you have hair or not, that, that's your personality. And a lot of times kids will use personalities as a defense mechanism for their hair or lack thereof. Because I found many bullies that have had alopecia universalis because they decided we're gonna strike first. We're gonna make fun of everyone else before they have a chance to make fun of me. And of course, we've also had the opposite where we've had kids that have been, just been brutalized and tortured every day because mm -hmm. of not having hair. Right. So when we get them all together, there's every combination and it helps the kids. I always say that if we could just get a warehouse, just open the doors, put the kids in there, lock the doors for two hours, and then after two hours, open it up, you will see a difference in your child because they got to hang out with other kids with alopecia and they get to form their own system of coping. And they're gonna see the kids that are doing great, the kids that are do not doing great. They're gonna see kids that aren't very nice and they're gonna see kids that are super nice and they're gonna realize where they fit in this world because they are now part of a tribe. Mm -hmm. Not rocket science. It's kind of easy when you think about it. Right. Yeah, I mean, because it solves that part of belonging. Uh, yeah. When you feel like you're different and then you realize that you're not really that different. Yep. Um, you know, it's like when I found out that there are 6.8 million Americans with alopecia. I'm like, where? I need to find them because <laughs> I, I want to see my people. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, totally, I totally understand that. So. Tell me about the parents. Is there any support or a particular program for the parents? You know what? The, the, we have nothing that's specific for the parents. And that okay. was done on purpose because if we did things just for the parents, the parents would be, they would be talking about more of the negative part of their life. Because as a parent, you want to fix your child, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And with alopecia, it's, it's actually, it's kind of, it's crueler than most other things that, that your child could have because there's such a social stigma on hair that if you do not have hair, then obviously people are going to think you're sick. And mm -hmm. if people are thinking you're sick, then that means you have to act a certain way and the parents need to act a certain way. So now the parents have to think about it. So when you get parents together and they're in a group 
a lot of times they're only thinking about the negative stuff and we want mm -hmm. them to think about the positive stuff, which is mm -hmm. why during the camps, we want them to participate in all the activities with their child because mm -hmm. we want them to see their transformation and that's what they do. They see, oh my God, we just had a camp um, um, in Florida, uh, south of Orlando and there was a, a dad that came up to me and said, I've never seen my son more happy than this weekend. And I'm thinking, your son is four years old. And I'm thinking, I can't believe this is the happiest your four-year-old has been. So when you think of it like that, what does a 12-year-old girl feel when she's starting junior high and she has hair loss? Where does that parent get to see their child having fun and being and being totally at ease with who they are? Mm -hmm. That's why this is important because now that dad knows his four-year-old had the most fun he ever saw. Well, the next time that there's a cap kid group meeting or a cap kid camp, if he brings his child, he's going to see his child even grow more. And that's our goal. We just we just want them to be part of our tribe and to join in whenever they can. So when it comes to the parents, the parents get the most out of it when they actually participate in the camps with us. And we have breakouts where we'll have uh, prominent adults with alopecia that will be talking about things that, that they've been challenged with. And they get to answer questions from the adults and they get to ask the adults questions. So you get it from a different perspective. We also have, kid panels where uh, pa parents can ask the kids real questions that maybe they would be a little ashamed or a little embarrassed to ask their own child and vice versa. So everyone's learning and some of it helps, some of it doesn't help, but then at the end of the weekend, you get to process all of this and you can find what works for you. And I think the, the nine cap kid camps that we have around the country, we have a spread out regionally so that way everyone has an opportunity to make it no matter how far away they live the 50 cap kid groups that we have again it's really about getting the kids together or having the online support by going onto a facebook page and just asking a question asking to get together with other people that's what is needed because we want to make sure that they know that they're not alone they're part of our tribe yeah. So when is the biggest event that, um, is it Alopecia Palooza? Yeah, Alope Alopecia Palooza, that's, uh, I'm looking up here because my calendar's up there. It's from June 15th to the 18th. And um, we've had them since 2009. And it's it's definitely the best four days of the year for me because there's not a greater concentration of kids with alopecia any place in the world except for that four day period. And the, the, the cool thing about it is that the speakers, the parents, the kids, they get so much out of it. And I'm just fortunate that I get to witness it all the time. Our second largest camp is in California. That's called Cali Palooza. And that is April 24th to the 26th. And then we have the regional ones. We have uh, seven other regional ones in Washington State, Colorado, Texas, Wisconsin, um, North Carolina, Florida, and Ohio. Amazing. So for people like me that do not have children yet, how can we help you? How can we contribute? Well, I I'm not the greatest at asking for money but to be honest money is the most important thing that we need and the reason i say that is because we never charge a child with alopecia for any of the camps it's always free the problem is that we need to have at least one adult parent or guardian to attend mm -hmm. and there's sometimes where they might not be able to afford that and we've never said no to anyone ever and we never will but we have a scholarship program that we're just starting and I'm going to announce it for the first time here. Um, there was an unfortunate situation where we had somebody that passed away from 
um, by some other ailments and he had alopecia and he was one of those he was one of those kids that that he did okay with his alopecia mm -hmm. and he played sports and he passed and I really wanted to do something that was, I don't know, I, just something that was good for the family, but more importantly to show other kids that you know, alopecia is the least of our problems when it comes to life. There are so many other illnesses and, and dilemmas and things that we have to go through. So what we want to do is, I was going to say his name, but it hasn't been finalized, but we've always had an account where we would always put money. So if somebody donated and said, listen, I want to help get a kid to camp, it's really helping getting their parent to camp. And we would start the, the program and we would just put the money in the account. And that's what we do. We would use that money to make sure that parents and even siblings get mm -hmm. to the camp we want the family to be there so with this scholarship we're going to name it and we're going to promote it and we want people to donate and if they want to help get a family member to camp they're going to they're going to know that their their funds will be utilized strictly for that um, or just general donations but more importantly share this this podcast share anything dealing with alopecia because mm -hmm. there are no more people getting alopecia we just are doing a better job at raising awareness for it we want everyone to know what it is and what it isn't and mm -hmm. i think uh, what you're doing is fantastic using your coaching and your expertise in that direction to do something like this it only helps the community both children and adult mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely my mission. I I also realized that a lot of people don't even know what alopecia is. So uh, part also of the summit is to bring that education and you know share with the world what this is all about. Uh, share the, the physical side of it and the emotional and mental health side of it because it's huge, as you know we talked about it earlier. Um, and more than anything, I want to bring to light all the resources that are available right now, because when I was going through it, I felt like there was nothing besides. So I was focusing on growing my hair back. So my focus was, you know, all the treatments and, all, you know, all those, those things that didn't work. You know, I don't know if my work for some. I'm, I'm not saying it's not going to work for anybody. It didn't work for me. But I wish I had a support group like this. I wish I had, um, you know, I don't know, like the, the, the tools that, that are out there right now, there's so much, so much stuff out there that I wish I had that the purpose for this summit for me is to spread the word about all the things that we can do as a community. Um, so we get to live the life that we want to live because we don't just, because we don't have hair, it doesn't mean that we have to stop our life. Well, better late than ever. Um, you have it now. So yes. we're, we're, we're happy that, that you're doing what you're doing and, and you're helping get awareness for the Children's Alopecia Project. And, uh, you know, I think when, when somebody goes to our website and they go there because of what you're doing, you don't even, like, you're behind the scenes. You're not even thinking about it. But just imagine one family goes to the website, makes a connection. They see when a camp is and they come to a camp. It changes the kid's life because it, I know it sounds cliche, but the camps, they're life changing for families. Yes. They're life changing. Yeah. yeah. If just one person comes to our website because of you. That's forget it. about doing anything else. You just did something incredible for someone else. And hopefully it's more than one. But of even course. Still, still, still <laughs> I'm awesome. shooting for hundreds. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, awesome. Thank you, Jeff, so much again for accepting my invitation. Um, I also know you are generous and have a gift for our audience. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yes, I can. The one thing that I do is, um, and I didn't speak to it, but I speak at over 70 schools every year around the country. And the one thing that we do is I make donations to the school library. Mm -hmm. and um anywhere from five to eight books so 
you know, we'll donate a book like, like Leo and Lucas. And it's about a boy with alopecia and his adventures. Other, other books that are generated more toward girls. But mm -hmm. my favorite one is a book that Sean O'Brien wrote, and it's about my daughter. It's Maddie teaching tolerance with a smile. Mm -hmm. And what I will do is this is going to be our giveaway. That's and amazing. It's my favorite book because, well, I don't have gray hair based on what the artists are thinking I have. <laughs> But it's 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 a fun book, and it you yeah. can be an older kid or a younger kid. The it's the message that's really important. It's just um, on a on a childlike basis of what happened. She lost her hair, and we started cap. This mm -hmm. just tells you a little bit about how we did it. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Jeff, again, and I really look forward to collaborate in many ways in the future. This is a cause that is really dear to my heart, so. I'll be happy to continue to raise awareness, spread the word, tell everyone to go to the cab camps because I think it's so important for the children and for the parents. We need to build this community and I know the power of community uh, when you're going, when you're living with alopecia because I don't like living, dealing with alopecia. I like to say that I live with alopecia. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, because we get to live. So. Um, thank you so much. I really You're very welcome. everything you're doing. You're welcome. Thank you for having me and much success and, and good luck with what you're doing. I think it's awesome.